are you due a controller upgrade? Because I was. The folks at GameSir sent this my way, the T4 Cyclone Pro multi-platform wireless gamepad for me to test out and share some thoughts. And GameSir's timing really couldn't have been better. Okay, for us mobile nerds, the sliding attaching gamepads have been one of the more popular options to show off. GameSir makes one uh, with this awesome cooling pad. It's a thermoelectric pad here on the front, but I've always preferred having a more traditional controller that can work with multiple platforms. On older phones, it was also so I didn't block the headphone jack. <sighs> Today, the thing that might make these slider controllers dicey is how big the camera lumps are getting on our phones. I just like the more conventional and the more familiar controller layout. I like the mix of a cabled connection, wireless connections, and being able to use the same hardware with my phone, a tablet, Steam Deck, laptop, or my PC. The controller I was using is getting a little old. It charges with a micro USB cable, and controller technology has improved quite a bit since then. T4 Cyclone Pro is immediately familiar if you've ever handled an Xbox controller, and it's an evolution. It's an iteration on their wired T4 controller, only without all the RGBs. I'll happily trade the pretty lights to get Bluetooth and a low latency wireless connection. The spec sheet is on point. We of course have the Hull Effect sticks, so we shouldn't have to deal with stick drift over the life of the controller. Also, Hull Effect triggers, dual mode for linear control, or you can set it to a hair trigger with vibration motors in the triggers and in the grips. Programmable back buttons for individual controls, or you can program them for macros. Gyros for motion control gaming. And front slots for a phone holder, which GameSir didn't have available yet, but I really want to try. And really clicky micro switches under the A, B, X, Y buttons. I've never actually owned a controller with micro switches here. I really like my clacky keyboard, so the clicky feedback on these buttons, I really like that. Maybe one of the only omissions moving from the cable T4, there is no headphone jack on the controller. Instead, that's where your wireless pairing button lives. My main complaint with the controller, I wish there were more specific switches for wireless modes. GameSir double button presses with the home button. So you home button plus X or home button plus B to switch between Bluetooth and dongle profiles. There's no indication on the controller which switch to use. So you just kind of switch through all of them until you see the color on the home button change to represent the mode you want. Those modes are detailed in the instruction pamphlet that comes with the controller that unfolds like a hilarious map that we used to use while going on road trips. So that GameSir can have every single language on the planet um, accounted for in their instruction sheet is quite a bit of paper. As this is a wireless controller and power draw can change between Bluetooth and dongle operation, I actually wish there was a more distinct battery readout to see charge remaining. It's something that I really like on the Steel series where these four lights can double up. They can show you whether or not you're in a pairing mode, how much charge is left on the controller, and what player number you are if you have multiple controllers connected. But all in all, I gotta say those are pretty minor gripes for what is otherwise a solidly built controller with some great features. It follows me easily from going cabled here in my office with my big chunky workstation to using the dongle with the gaming PC behind my TV and then going Bluetooth with my phones, tablets, and my Steam Deck. Playing games on it is really nice. It's just a touch lighter than an Xbox controller and there's a really nicely articulated action on these buttons. And maybe that's also another minor concern depending on your living arrangements. This isn't a controller I would want to use at night if I was gaming next to say my sleeping wife, this would be too clicky. But I do have a question for this video, especially for the gamers in my audience. I don't believe I would consider this a pro controller, but it's like a transition from a standard gamepad to a pro controller. And where do you draw that line? The stick switches and triggers should be decently durable. We don't have paddles per se, but underside buttons are appreciated. And of course, GameSir has a series of apps and PC software to customize the experience and calibrate the gyros, sticks, and triggers. I can totally see where a premium top tier pro controller is gonna offer some goodies above and beyond, but I've been consistently impressed with the improvements we've seen to the tech 
arriving at more mainstream prices, where the T4 Cyclone Pro is launching at an MSRP of $49.99. A T4 Cyclone non-pro is also launching without the low latency dongle included with membrane buttons, but keeping the Hall effect sticks and triggers and using a more Nintendo style layout for the buttons for $39.99. This is exactly the upgrade that we needed in our household. The move to a USB-C charger is just so much more convenient for all the cables that we're currently using. I've really been digging it. it it's been a great upgrade for a multi-system gamepad. So, what do you think? Has GameSir done it? Would this be your jam? Drop a comment down below and maybe smash that bell icon on your way down to comment. And I will, of course, leave a link down below in the description for where you can find more information on the T4 Cyclone Pro, the T4 Cyclone, all the rest of the really terrific GameSir controllers that we've been checking out over the last couple years, and where you can shop those puppies online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are checking out links in the description, maybe you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy, basically everywhere. But I'm spending a lot of my time these days on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters. But I will catch you all on the next review.